Hello everybody, this is the Cat and Cog Studios build of the Music from Outer Space Noise Toaster. This build is for the contest being held by SynthCube on Build Your Own Noise Toaster. So, I went ahead and built my own noise toaster to enter into the contest. And with that, let's get into the build. It's a little bit of a long video, but, uh, you know, we'll get through it. So the first thing I did was uh, separate all my components. Uh, prior to the video, I had measured out all my components, all my resistors, made sure that uh, all the markings were correct, that it was actually a hundred ohm resistor that I was going to put in, and so on and so forth. And of course, after that, I separate out all the capacitors and the transistors, all the switches, the speaker and all the pots. Now I am going to be using a lot of recycled components on this. Well, recycled components, mostly recycled switches from older projects. The uh, speaker was in an older project that uh, I took it out of. The pots, you know, a lot of the pots are from older projects that either uh, don't use much anymore or are just spare parts at this point. So the first thing that we do, or that I did, we do, I guess a lot of people do it, is I populated the board with all the resistors. Uh, that's usually what people do, right? The lowest, easiest things to put in there. Uh, you know, Ray always put the uh, component uh, numbers and names on there, not the values. So you got to reference the uh, website, the bill of materials. Make sure you're putting those. Uh, you got to double check. Double check with some of Ray's stuff. Make sure you're putting the right resistor in the right place. Eh, camera work gets better later on. So I did mostly have 1% uh, resistors for this, and it doesn't really matter. It's not a, uh, it's not one of, the, it's not a synth that you can keep in any kind of tune. So you know, 5% work just fine too. But I just had a, had a bucket full of 1%, but I didn't have a bucket. But in that bucket, I did not have a 1% 820 ohm. So that is a 5% resistor on this board but whatever it worked and it'll work nonetheless so burning through the resistors right now almost done with them the pile is slowly getting lower and lower every now and again I reach over to my computer to reference to make sure you know am I is that the right resistor? Is it going in the right place? I usually keep most of the leads I cut off. You know, they make great little jumpers. When you need a jumper somewhere, you need to bridge a couple lugs on a pot. Uh, we've moved on to capacitors. Threw in an IC holder there, too, because I got some fat capacitors and uh, some of the capacitors are pretty close to those IC positions, so I went ahead and put that IC uh, header in there so I can make sure that uh, the capacitors fit in there too. Some fat capacitors. So we get all those things on and then I... Uh, the next thing I oh, yeah, put in the electrolytics and then I think I threw in the uh, transistors so there is one note that I'll make for everybody out there and hey man you guys might already know this but <clears throat> I didn't know this it's been a while since I've built something after the capacitors I move on to the transistors uh, there's a couple of uh, tw 2906s and 
2904s, just MPN and PMP transistors. There's also some JFETs on there. The ones that are suggested in the bill of materials aren't produced anymore. So the one I found that works is the J201. That is a direct equivalent or at least enough of an equivalent for this project to get uh, the oscillator to start, the VCA to close, and you know, to get the filter to work. Now I moved on to the designing the panel. You know, I'm using front panel designer. I'm just designing it with uh, just getting the holes drilled. I'm not uh, I'm not gonna get any uh, words or uh, indicators put on here. I'm trying to keep it under the money, you know, budget. Budget noise toaster is what I'm going for here. So I've got the solid circles here are the holes that are actually being drilled and the larger circles around on the holes represent the actual size of the pot that I'm going to be putting in there. Um, it's just, I just use those larger circles as a guide so you know I don't overlap any, um, any holes or put drill any holes too close to one another. Um, so you have the, the big ones for the speaker. Yep, we'll put a speaker in there. Now I am, uh, one thing I am not going to do is I'm not going to be using a battery. I'm just going to be using a 9 volt DC power supply. It's really like the only thing on here that uh, isn't following the original. I am also putting in the uh, CV, uh, VCO CV modification on it, as well as the VCF input. And just straightening out the lines for the speaker there and it's pretty much done for the most part almost and then we order it and we wait for it to show up and with the magic of video editing a week passes and the panel shows up. Let's go ahead and open up the box. We get a sticker, we get the panel. They even give you some gummy bears. So now I just print out a template of my panel. <clears throat> it's kind of, I'm gonna draw and I'm gonna print all of the print all of the indicators and everything on here by hand. You know, so it's one of the fun parts creating it, you know. I like to do some visual artwork stuff. So yeah, I just drew it all on the piece of paper so I had a reference and then I just um, I had some paint pens. Old paint pens, had to shake them a lot to get them to come out. So yeah, my brother used to do this for me but I do it mostly these days. Um, so yeah, I'm just, you know, right now painting on the lines to separate all the different uh, modules within the noise toaster. So yeah, you know, there's VCO, VCF, envelope, LFO, VCA, mix. You know, I know on the original panel it didn't have a mix section, but it did have mix switches, right? Okay. So yeah, now I'm just writing all the names of everything, draw a little LFO waveforms badly. Uh, you know, highlight the uh, module names, you know, there's a little pink on the purple. And then once I get all the indicators and the names down, just draw just draw some extra stuff on there, why not? Just kind of decorate, gotta have a MFOS down there. Draw a little alien dude on the side. And then just rando blobs, maybe some eyeballs or something like that, you know. Trying to make it look somewhat interesting. Wanted to do the artwork by hand, so I guess it added a little character, I suppose, right? And then what it does, adds character. Just 
just kind of going right back over everything. That's kind of how what you have to do with paint pens. It's like paint, right? You got to do layers. Got to do layers. You do your initial layer, and then you let it dry. Then you do a new layer, then you let it dry. Then you do your last layer, and you're good. Hopefully. Didn't really take too long. Yeah, you know, it's kind of good to let this sit uh, sit for a few hours. Oil-based paints. Let them sit for a few hours, dry out. Now, all right. So we moved on, putting the uh, spacers on the PCB, and now we're putting all the pots and switches and everything on the front panel, on the front panel. Got the uh, convenient little 3D printed socket drivers. Oh, got a bunch of different sizes for, you know, toggle switches, potentiometers, quarter inch, eighth inch, all the parts that you would uh, normally use on a pedal or synth build. They're very useful, very, very efficient. And they believe they're 3D printed, so they don't scratch up your, they don't scratch up your panel. Now you can see some of the used wires, some of the old wires hanging off the back of the pots there. Some old boxes that I pulled the PCBs out of and use somewhere else or I don't know don't know what happened to them in some cases so I had a box full of pots and switches and I was like alright well, I'll use these so okay now we're gonna go ahead and wire all of this fine panel here I'll admit it's not my not my finest wiring job but you know it'll make it through so I wrote down, you know, I just wrote all the pot numbers down, reference to the uh, schematics and the panel wiring diagram on the website. So, you know, I'm putting it on the right, putting the uh, right wire on the right lug. Now there were a couple times that I soldered the wrong thing on the wrong lug, so I had to go back in and unsolder it and resolder it. But you know, that's the fun, right? Troubleshooting is half the fun. So with a lot of Ray's designs, many of them, there were some, you know, components that you had to solder to the panel components, I believe. On this one, there's a capacitor that you have to solder between uh, some switch lugs, and there is a uh, resistor you have to solder between uh, two different pot lugs. You know, those can be challenging at times, especially the, the capacitor that I had. It was, it's a very fat capacitor. It was the only one microfarad capacitor or whatever, the last. I think there's like three in this project. I had like two electrolytics and then a polyester capacitor. It was a very fat capacitor. It was very challenging. I used sub miniature toggle switches. That's what I had left over. So it was challenging getting that on there, but you know, we got it on there. It worked, worked great. So yeah, I'll take the PCB and I'll put it on top of the uh, panel just to make sure that I cut the right length of wire to get from the board to the uh, component on the panel. Now for this one, I put the uh, PCB components up if you're looking 
at the back side of the panel and components up. And then I fed all the wires up underneath and just soldered the wires on the top side of the PCB. Uh, you know, just so I didn't have to, you know, in the past when I've done it, where you put the wire through the top of the PCB and then solder at the bottom, you know, you gotta sometimes you cut one wire too short and then you gotta try to twist the PCB back around to the way you want it and, oh, the wire's too long and you can't get it back on your, uh, standoffs. I'm sure someone out there knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, so I just figured, ah, you know, I'll just feed the wires up to the bottom, to the back side of the PCB, and just solder them on the top, and it'll work out great. And it did. It worked out great. Now we're getting closer to the end of the wiring. Eh, closer. Not, not completely done yet, but we're getting there. This is a long process. But, you know, it's a good time. So I got a little 3-watt uh, speaker down there that we put on, that I put in the noise toaster. Um, I can't remember what he suggested. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, big enough speaker for that little amplifier that's in there. Which I did not use the capacitor to boost the output. I can't remember if it boosts the input gain or the output gain. I can't, off the top of my head, I don't remember. But uh, I did not put that modification in. Uh, just because I just I don't really think this little tiny speaker is going to need the extra oomph that that uh, 10 microfarad capacitor is going to give it. I, I'm if I'm to use this I mean I'll most likely give this box to the kids because they love noisemakers and hey you don't have to plug it anything and into anything to make any noise so the speakers there but if I'm gonna use it for anything like drones and tones or whatever it's a good little percussive thing you can make some interesting little percussive sounds with it I would just use the quarter inch output now it's been a while since I've built one of these things, so I don't know. I can't remember how noisy it is, or... Uh, and when I say noisy, just, you know. Sometimes I've built these things and you can hear the LFO bleed through the output. But hey, that's okay, it's a noise box. It's not supposed to be a perfect synth. It's supposed to be a fun noise maker. Making the noise. So on SynthCube, you know, they mentioned that a lot of people were introduced to Ray Wilson's uh, synthesizers through the noise toaster. Me, myself, I was introduced uh, through Ray Wilson's synthesizer work with the uh, weird sound generator, which was the first little noise box that he did. This one came a little later. Um, so I had built that one before. I built a couple of those. It's a fun little noise box. He, uh updated with this noise box it's got a better filter if i remember correctly um it's a little more organized like a synth where the noise toes or the not the the uh, weird sound generator is more of a uh, so if i were to say this one is uh, designed one like a with a synthesizer in mind the other one is a total noise box you know I mean, it's got synthesizer components, you know, oscillators, LFOs, it's got a filter, you know, but it's uh, more geared towards uh, really, really uh, outlandish, uncontrollable, uh, noisy madness. It's, it's a cool little module, so if you haven't built a weird sound generator, definitely uh, build that one too. 
Of course, this one also is a uh, crazy noise generator too, but nope. Now we're coming to the end. I'm just gave it some power and now I'm just testing out the power there and installing the ICs. Unfortunately, my uh, build footage of this box got corrupted, so I don't have any footage to show you guys of me building this box for it, but I built this box for it. Then I'm going to put these knobs I had left over from some project on here. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up, you know. That's the noise toaster that I built here at Cat and Cog Studios. And if you stick around and watch part two of this video series, it will be the demo of the noise toaster that I built. Um, might not be the type of demo that people are usually used to, but it'll be a demo. So, hey, thanks for watching.